how do you get motivated? Well, one way to do that is if you are good at subjectively attaching dopamine to the pursuit, just knowing, okay, I really am hungry for this. I'm just, I'm gonna tell myself that making it 1% of the way is a success and I'm gonna keep going and I'm gonna keep ratcheting on. And that's great if you can do that. But for people that can't do that, understanding this relationship with the pleasure pain balance can be more powerful. Anytime you have a bunch of dopamine and you're in pursuit, 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 after you achieve a win, now this could be a, a business win, a relationship, a win of any kind, but inevitably there's going to be a tipping back of the scale on the pain side. And that pain side is always gonna go a little bit higher than the dopamine side. So this is what you would feel if you pursued a goal like building a big company, here it comes, here it comes, the big sale, and then there's the, well, what now? Is the kind of letdown. Now, if you wait, if you simply wait and stop pursuing dopamine for a short while, the scale starts to reset. The problem is a lot of people immediately roll right into the next pursuit. And then what happens is that scale starts to get stuck on the pain side, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And pretty soon, no amount of seeking will allow you to experience that craving and motivation. Just understanding the more friction and pain that you experience, the greater the dopamine reward you will get later. And that serves as its own amplifier of the whole process of pursuing more dopamine. And then the other aspect of it is that anytime that we're leaning into action, it, you know, it has the, the possibility of being an amplifying process or a depleting process. And the key to that is making sure that you're Balancing the dopamine and epinephrine systems. You know, epinephrine being this molecule of universal currency of energy output. Could be out of hate or it could be out of love. Epinephrine doesn't care. And actually dopamine doesn't care. None of these systems care about us. They just work underneath our conscious control. But when you start to understand that hitting the gas pedal is great, but hitting the gas pedal and then coming off the gas pedal a little bit, you can kind of sit in a more relaxed RPM. Actually allows you to go much further. I think that people Leaning into action is terrific. I always say you can either be back on your heels, flat-footed, or forward center of mass. The best situation is actually to be right upright, but just know that you can be forward center of mass at any point. When I say the common currency is dopamine, what I mean is the molecule dopamine, when secreted in the brain, makes us pursue things, build things, create things, makes us want new things that we don't currently already have. And so it has a lot of dimensions to it, but rather than think about dopamine as a signal for reward, like a dopamine hit, we classically mm. think to talk about it. It's more accurate really to think about dopamine as driving motivation and craving to go seek rewards. That's the rat experiment. And it's a way of tabulating where we are in our life are we doing well or are we doing poorly? And that happens on very short time scales. Like do you wake up feeling good or do you wake up feeling kind of low? Or on long time scales, if you're halfway through a long degree or you're halfway through your life, how are you doing? How do you gauge that? Well, it has everything to do with how much dopamine you were releasing in the previous days and weeks and years. So you're always comparing it and all of this is subconscious. But what's cool is that once you make these processes conscious, once you understand a little bit about how dopamine is released and how it changes our perspective and our behavior, then you can actually work with it. Celebrating the win more than the pursuit, it actually sets you up for failure in the future. And oh so this God. gets us right into something called dopamine reward prediction error. And reward prediction error is basically if you expect something to be really great and then it's not quite that great, your dopamine baseline lowers and now understanding what we know about dopamine, that means that not only did you, you feel as if you lost because it wasn't as much a celebration as you thought it would be, but it also means that you're starting from a lower place, meaning you are less motivated. Now, the, the simpler way to conceptualize this, your capacity to tap into dopamine as a motivator, not just seeking dopamine rewards, that is infinite. And I, I can say with, with great certainty that this is how you were able to build a big company and sell it, how you're constantly seeking because seeking is the reward. And I think for most people, we think of the reward as the finish line. And so the key is to get to the finish line, step into the end zone, but no end zone dance. It's just like, yep, and now I'm gonna go do it again. That's really the key. That's, that's the key to doing it over and over. Dopamine itself is not the reward. It's the build up to the reward. And the reward has more of a kind of opioid bliss-like property, which itself is not bad if it's endogenous, it's released from within. But when we can just sit there like the, like the rat with no dopamine, gorging ourselves with pleasures, what you end up with is somebody that feels really unmotivated and those pleasures no longer work to tickle those feel-good circuits. And so there's no reason for them to go out and pursuing. And that's a pretty dark picture. So the, the keys are 
to pursue rewards, but understand that the pursuit is actually the reward. In pursuit of goals, you have to learn how to pursue short-term goals and like the goals within the day, make a cup of coffee and long-term goals. And when I said dopamine is what's setting your time perception, it's an interval timer. What you're saying is it's like the two marshmallow experiment done at Stanford, defer the dopamine and actually, if you can turn the waiting into the dopamine and then you can extend out the reward for you know waiting for the second marshmallow 15 minutes later etc cetera, etc cetera. there are many many examples of this in the psychology and, and neuroscience literature and i would say finally in 2020 we got a clear idea of how dopamine is really working because before it was all about work dopamine hit right sex gives you a dopamine hit the internet gives you a dopamine hit what we didn't realize is that repeated engagement with these things leads to dopamine depletion and that the pain and pleasure balance is always at work